Hello and welcome. So tomorrow is the next uh, esports battle. So I was thinking I might have to take a day off, model off, and do a little uh, a little warm up for that. And then I realized, hey, the next model off question is a game. So this can be my uh, my warm up and uh, and keep going through model off. So this one is uh, about a dice game. Uh, you get you roll six dice in a turn. Uh, and then you score them in all these different ways and you figure out the best one of those. Uh, so you find the highest possible combined score from two turns. So each each turn you roll six. Let me pull up the data here. So the both of these roll sets of six are, are both game number one, turn one and turn two. So you score uh, score each of them. Um, you get the highest possible combined score from the two turns, but you cannot use the same category. So you score in whatever six six different categories. Ah, go away. Um, but you can't use the same category to score both uh, turns. So you're going to run a simulation. You've already got the the dice here, and you want to score all the different games. Okay, so pretty simple instructions. Let's dive on in. So we've got six different things to score on. So let's just score them all. Uh, so we've got high and often summation. Uh, highs and lows, only two, all the numbers, and ordered sub. So high and often is uh, any turn, six rolls, rolls, okay, fine. So the score is the highest number rolled in the turn multiplied by the number of times it was rolled in that turn. So uh, I guess we'll say let uh, m be max of this then it's m times count if this m. Okay, so here we have 1, 6, fine, not very exciting. Let's go for something that's higher, just make sure this is working. Okay, so here we have, I guess, two fives. Yes, 5 and 5 makes 10. Good. Sum is that it is literally just the sum. <coughs> uh, okay, highs and lows. The highest number rolled multiplied by the lowest number rolled multiplied by the difference between them. Okay, so let D be all of this, then it's going to be uh, max of D times min of D times max of D minus min of D. Okay, uh, the six rolls are only two numbers. So here we can say if, well, first let's do unique. Uh, I think there is a way to make unique, yes, do by columns. So yeah, we just need to do count the columns of that. The columns of unique, and we want that to be there are all one of two numbers. I think that means that if there's only one number, that also counts. I guess. Uh, so we're going to say yeah. Uh, so we're going to say if columns of that is less than or equal to two, then thirty. Otherwise zero. Okay. Then all the numbers. So, can I, yeah, I guess we can use the exact same thing. We can say, boom, if unique columns, in other words, there are six unique numbers, then what does that score? 40. And then the last one is slightly funky. Uh, when listed in the order rolled, the numbers contain a run of four consecutive increasing or decreasing numbers, e.g. 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, 4, 3, 2. Okay, so... I guess. <laughs> I guess what I'm going to do for this is. So let me just show you the idea first. The idea is we've got uh, six numbers, so uh, there are so four different ways that we could we could be looking at the first four, the middle four, or the last four. Um, and then for each of those, we just want to look at the difference between the first column and second column, second column and third column, third column and fourth column. Uh, and if all those differences are equal, that means they're all uh, they're all stepping in order and there's not, between one and six, you don't have room to take three steps of two. So if they're all equal, they're all one. So how do we do that? We'll say index this. Uh, so row number will be sequence, comma four. Uh, and then plus sequence. So we're going to do that for 0, 1, and 2. So sequence 3, comma, comma, 0. And that gives me all my numbers. Good. Um, 
But actually, sorry, I guess what I want to do is I want to get the second block of these and then I want to get the first block of these. So that's going to be three starting from two. I'm going to give me the second block and then same thing. Whoops. Same thing starting from one. I'm going to give me the first block and I subtract those. And then if any one of these rows are all the same, then we are good. So I'm going to say by row of that. Uh, and function to apply to each row is lambda of x, where x is the row. I'm going to say and uh, x equals index x1. Uh, and then we'll just wrap all of that in an or, because if that's true for any of them, then we're good. Okay, and then finally, if that, then we get 50 points, otherwise zero. Okay, that one was a bit of a mouthful compared to the others, but I think we're all set up now. So let's just do a quick check. I'm sure they've set the data up in such a way that some of these occur. Okay, so let's see, we got a 4321, we got... Ah, nope. No, 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 because those are all the same. Those are all the gaps are all zero. Whoops. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, and x equals that, comma, index x one, not equal to zero. Try again. Oh, what? Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, five. Uh, no, hang on. What? And x here, x one, index x one, not equal to zero. Why would that make it be more true? That is making no sense to me now. Okay. All right. So I might have screwed this one up. Uh, all right. So let's hit undo a couple times. Get rid of that. So what do we want? I'm going to make this and the one. I'm going to multiply it. Index x1 not equal to zero. One of these things where if this were not a competition, I would now go and look and figure out what's going wrong. But in a competition, you just want to get on with it. So that's, yeah, this is still not working. Five, four, oh, sorry, five, four, three, two, that is working. Five, four, three, two, that is working. Two, three, four, five, that is working. Okay, so sorry, I guess there were just more of them than I thought the first time. No, that's fine. Uh, let's see, two, three, four, five. Okay, that looks better. Four, three, two, one. Okay, happy days. Uh, all right, so quick check on the others. <laughs> Seems fine. Uh, and all of these have 21. They all have six. They all have 30, which makes sense. They should all match on that. Only two. So you've got threes and fives, twos and fives, twos and fives, ones and fives. Ones and fives. Okay, all right. I think this is all working. So let's go answer some questions. Uh, so, sorry, I should have, uh, let me just put them right here. So questions, what did it say? 20 to 29. So the sequence 10 starting from 20. Eh? No, sorry. Two commas starting from 20. Okay. So question 20. If all turns were scored as high enough, then what would be the total score? Uh, 50,246, which is B. Good. Um, what is the most common score that would be attained if all were scored under the sum the most common score? Okay, so I guess mode of this. Harder to be sure if that's right, but it's among the answers at least, so that's F. And that makes sense, actually, because that would be, that's statistically the most likely. Best possible score using the highs and lows. Uh, well probably equal to my best actual score using the highs and lows. So let's see, that's 6 and 3. That makes sense. Because 6 and 2, yeah, okay. I believe that. So I'm going to say just max of that, uh, which is I. Okay, 23. Turn the, in terms of the qualify to be scored, how many threes were rolled in total? Okay. Uh, I'm going to say some... Uh, of this equals three times this greater than zero. I think that'll work. 128, which is B. Okay, 24. 
looking at all the turns in the order listed in the workbook, which turn number is the 50th turn to qualify for all the numbers. Okay, so that should be index filter turn number, which is here, where, oops, where all the numbers uh, is greater than zero, and index on that 50. 3148, which is D. Hooray. Okay, 25. How many turns qualify to be scored as ordered subset of four? That's definitely the hardest one. So it's a count if of that greater than zero. I think it's 98. I don't know, it's one of the answers. Who knows? 26. If all turns were scored according to their second highest scoring category, okay? So best, because I'll need that in a minute anyway, uh, second best. So sum those up. One, two, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now I'm feeling pretty good about things. That's G. Twenty-seven. Grouping the turns into games, you can identify the highest game score achieved. How many games achieved that score? Okay, so let's group the turns into games. So the idea of the game score is um, is that you can. Uh, you can take the best score from the two games, except that you can't use the same category twice. So, game score. So, NA for the first one, and then for the second one. One, one way to do it is... Hmm, I'm trying to think, there's all these edge cases where something might come up more than once. So, okay, so best cat. Uh, I'm going to say... Let, so first I'm going to figure out how many things get the best score. Whoops, sorry, let fill, sorry. Um, let cats be filter on this lock where uh, this equals this. So those are your winning categories. Uh, and then if not found, we'll just say well, no, there won't be not found. That doesn't make any sense. There will be one. Uh, so then we'll say if uh, columns of cats is greater than one, then multi otherwise cats. So there we go. And then we'll say uh, if. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll say if this is equal to this, if they both have the same best score, then it's the max of the best of that one plus the second best from that one, sorry, plus the second best from that one, or the best from that one plus the second best from that one. And if they don't, oh, no, hang on, sorry. So if they match and there are not multiples, so this not equal to multiple. Then it's that, because you can't use the best from them both. Otherwise, it's just the sum of the two bests. OK, so now uh, we want count ifs of this by max of this. See how many times did the best score occur? The answer is 9, which is a very unnerving answer because it's just a small whole number. OK, uh, what is the total score for all the games? And it doesn't give you a multiple choice for this one, so I'll just have to sit nervously. Uh, and then if the odd number games are played by player 1 and the even number games are played by player 2, and they're matched off against each other, what is the value of number of matches won by player 1 minus the number of matches won by player 2? OK, so... Uh, P1, V, P2. And here I'm just going to say one result after two games, and that is a uh, sign of where is it? odd numbers are player one. So the sign of this minus this. So if the two numbers are equal, that's going to be zero. If player one is bigger, then it's a positive number. So that's going to be a plus one, yes. And otherwise it's going to be a minus one. So then... My answer is just going to be the sum of that column. 
this might be my shortest one of these videos if it turns out that these answers are right. Otherwise, I got to do some debugging. So B F I B D E G F. B F I B D E G F. Did I say B? Yes. Uh, and then one seven eight zero five two and twenty three. Hooray! All right, that's all I got for today. It was a quick one.